Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Today, we're excited to take you on a biblical journey through the Old Testament. We've curated 25 intriguing questions that will test your knowledge of Israel's history and stories. But before we jump into the quiz, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Your support helps us share God's Word with even more people. And after you've completed the quiz, make sure to leave a comment below to let us know how many questions you got right. We'd love to hear from you and be part of your journey through the Scriptures. So, are you ready to dive into these 25 best Old Testament Bible questions about Israel? Let's get started. Question 1. Which of the 12 tribes of Israel served as priests? A. Gad B. Levi C. Judah D. Ephraim You get 10 seconds. That's B, Levi. The Levites were set apart by God to perform religious duties and take care of the tabernacle, and later, the temple. Within the tribe of Levi, the descendants of Aaron served as high priests, overseeing sacrifices and other religious ceremonies. Numbers, chapter 18, verses 1 to 7. Question 2. What sacrifice did Jephthah offer to God for giving the Ammonites into his hand? A. A ram. B. His oldest son. C. His only daughter. D. A one-year-old lamb. You get 10 seconds. That's C, his only daughter. Jephthah vowed to offer whatever came out of his house first if God gave him victory over the Ammonites. Tragically, it was his daughter who came to see him and he felt obligated to fulfill his vow by offering his daughter as a burnt offering to God. This story serves as a warning against making hasty vows. Judges chapter 11, verses 34 to 40. Question three. Who gathered the tribes of Israel at Shechem to remind them of God's goodness shortly before he died? A. Joshua B. Moses C. Samuel D. Gideon You get 10 seconds. That's A, Joshua. In Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 to 28, he recounted God's deeds for Israel, including the exodus from Egypt and the conquest of the Promised Land. Joshua challenged the Israelites to choose whom they would serve, emphasizing the importance of their covenant with God. This speech marked one of Joshua's final acts as leader, reinforcing his commitment to God's law. Question 4. Who was the only woman among the judges who ruled over Israel? A. Jael B. Esther C. Miriam D. Deborah You get 10 seconds. That's D, Deborah. She was a prophetess and judge during a time when Israel was oppressed by the Canaanites. In Judges chapters 4 to 5, Deborah, along with Barak, led the Israelites to victory over the Canaanite army under Sisera. Deborah's leadership, wisdom, and prophetic role make her unique among the judges of Israel. 
Question 5. Which tribe settled on the east of the Jordan River? A. Gad and Asher. B. Judah and Benjamin. C. Reuben and Gad. D. Zebulun and Issachar. You get 10 seconds. That's C, Reuben and Gad. The tribes that settled on the east of the Jordan River were Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These tribes chose this land because it was suitable for their livestock and herds. This arrangement is described in Numbers chapter 32, verses 1 to 33, where these tribes agreed to help the other tribes conquer the land west of the Jordan before settling in their chosen territories. Dear one, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can stay in the loop and catch all our upcoming videos. Question 6. The Apostle James, writing to the twelve tribes, said, The prayer of faith will fill in the blank. A. Bring rain. B. Save the sick. C. Move mountains. D. Heal the brokenhearted. You get 10 seconds. That's B, save the sick. This is found in James chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. In this passage, James emphasizes the power of prayer especially when offered with faith. He encourages believers to pray for one another and assures them that prayer can bring healing and restoration. This verse underscores the importance of faith in the Christian community. Question 7. Who was the first king of Judah after the ten tribes split from Judah? A. Adonijah B. Solomon C. Jeroboam D. Rehoboam You get 10 seconds. That's D. Rehoboam. The split occurred during his reign after he refused to lighten the harsh labor demands imposed by his father, Solomon. This led to the rebellion of the ten northern tribes, forming the kingdom of Israel. The southern kingdom, Judah, remained under Rehoboam's rule. The event is detailed in 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 1 to 24, showing how Rehoboam's lack of wisdom led to the division of the United Kingdom. Question 8. Who was the left-handed judge? A. Ehud B. Othniel C. Gideon D. Jephthah You get 10 seconds. That's A, Ehud. His story is found in Judges chapter 3, verses 12 to 30, where he delivers Israel from the Moabites. Ehud's left-handedness allowed him to conceal a weapon on his right thigh, which he used to assassinate King Eglon of Moab. This bold act of deliverance led to Israel's liberation from Moabite oppression. Ehud's cunning and resourcefulness exemplify the unexpected ways God delivers his people. Question 9. Whose sin caused God to make the ten tribes of Israel split off from Judah? A. Saul B. David C. Solomon D. Jeroboam You get ten seconds.
that C, Solomon. Despite his wisdom, Solomon's later years were marked by idolatry as he built altars to foreign gods due to his marriages to many foreign wives. Because of this, God decreed that the kingdom would be divided, with ten tribes forming the northern kingdom of Israel and two tribes remaining with Judah. Solomon's deviation from God's commands ultimately led to the fracturing of the United Kingdom. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 9 to 13. Question 10. In the book of Revelation, how many were sealed from the tribes of Israel? A. 44,000. B. 14,400. C. 132,000. D. 144,000. You get 10 seconds. That's D, 144,000. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 4 to 8, John describes a vision of 12,000 people sealed from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, totaling 144,000. It represents God's careful selection and consecration of a group intended for His purposes. The sealing process indicates that these individuals are under God's unique care and reflects His covenant relationship with Israel. Question 11. What judge defeated a huge army with 300 men? A. Ehud B. Gideon C. Samson D. Jephthah You get 10 seconds. That's B, Gideon. In Judges, chapter 7, God instructed Gideon to reduce his army to demonstrate that victory was from him, not from numbers or human strength. Gideon used unconventional tactics like blowing trumpets and breaking jars with torches inside to create confusion among the Midianites, leading to a decisive victory. This story highlights the power of faith and reliance on God's guidance in achieving success. Question 12. What was the celebration of God's saving of the firstborn when the Israelites were in Egypt? A. Passover B. Pentecost C. Feast of Trumpets D. Feast of Tabernacles you get 10 seconds. That's A, Passover. This feast commemorates the night when the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites sparing the firstborns while striking down the firstborns of the Egyptians. This event is recorded in Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 to 28, where God instructed the Israelites to mark their doorposts with the blood of a lamb to ensure their safety. Passover has since become a key annual celebration in Jewish tradition, representing deliverance and God's faithfulness. Question 13. Which king of Assyria deported the ten northern tribes of Israel? A. Esarhaddon B. Sennacherib C. Shalmaneser V D. Tiglath-Pileser III You get ten seconds. That's C, Shalmaneser V. This event, known as the Assyrian Captivity, took place in 722 B.C. Shalmaneser V besieged Samaria, 
the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, leading to its capture and the subsequent deportation of the ten tribes to various regions within the Assyrian Empire. This event is mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 17, verses 3 to 6, illustrating the consequences of Israel's persistent idolatry and disobedience to God. Question 14. Which judge over Israel destroyed the Temple of Dagon? A. Ehud B. Barak C. Othniel D. Samson You get 10 seconds. That's D, Samson. In Judges chapter 16, verses 23 to 30, Samson, who had been captured and blinded by the Philistines, was brought to the temple of Dagon to be mocked. Seeking strength from God one final time, he pushed against the temple pillars, causing it to collapse, killing himself and many Philistines. This act of destruction was Samson's final act of faith and redemption demonstrating God's power and using Samson to deliver Israel from its oppressors. Question 15. For how many days did King Solomon and the people of Israel feast at the dedication of the temple? A. Seven days. B. Fourteen days. C. Twenty-four days. D. Forty days. You get ten seconds. That's B, 14 days. This event is described in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 65, where Solomon held a great celebration for the dedication of the temple, which included seven days of feasting, followed by another seven days, totaling 14 days. This prolonged celebration marked the completion and consecration of the temple, reflecting the joy and gratitude of the people for this significant milestone in Israel's history. Question 16. Who gave Solomon the plan for the temple? A. King David B. The angel Gabriel C. Nathan the prophet D. Solomon's chief architect You get 10 seconds. That's A, King David. David presented Solomon with detailed plans for building the temple, which he received through divine inspiration. Although David had desired to build the temple himself, God instructed him that his son, Solomon, would undertake this significant project. David's careful preparation and guidance laid the foundation for the temple's construction. First Chronicles, chapter 28, verses 11 to 19. Question 17. The names of the twelve tribes of Israel were written on the gates of fill in the blank. A. Jerusalem. B. The Temple. C. The New Jerusalem. D. The Ark of the Covenant. You get 10 seconds. That's C, the New Jerusalem. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 12, where John describes the vision of the New Jerusalem, the heavenly city, with 12 gates. Each gate bore the name of one of the 12 tribes of Israel, symbolizing the continuity of God's covenant with his people and the restored unity in the new creation. These gates represented the entrance into the eternal city. Question 18. 
which judge would not go into battle without a woman going with him? A. Barak B. Gideon C. Othniel D. Samson You get 10 seconds. That's A, Barak. In Judges chapter 4, verses 8 to 9, Barak asked the prophetess and Judge Deborah to accompany him into battle against the Canaanite army led by Sisera. Deborah agreed but noted that the honor of defeating Sisera would go to a woman, as he would be killed by Jael. Barak's request reflects Deborah's significant role as a leader and prophetess. Question 19. What animal did Aaron carve from gold for the people of Israel to worship? A. Bull B. Calf C. Lion D. Horse You get 10 seconds. That's B, calf. While Moses was on Mount Sinai, the people grew impatient and asked Aaron to make them a god to worship. Aaron complied by melting their gold jewelry and crafting a golden calf. This act of idolatry provoked God's anger, leading to significant consequences for the Israelites and illustrating the dangers of turning away from God's commandments. Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 to 6. Question 20. Who was the grandson of Aaron who rescued Israel from God's anger? A. Moses B. Eliezer C. Ithamar D. Phinehas You get 10 seconds. That's D, Phinehas. In Numbers chapter 25, verses 6 to 13, the Israelites worshipped idols with the Midianites, which angered God. Phinehas killed an Israelite man and a Midianite woman who were flagrantly sinning, thereby appeasing God's anger and ending the plague. This decisive act brought him and his descendants a covenant of peace from God, recognizing his righteousness and dedication. Question 21. Who succeeded Aaron as a priest? A. Korah B. Moses C. Eleazar D. Ithamar You get 10 seconds. That's C, Eliezer. In Numbers chapter 20, verses 25 to 28, God instructed Moses to take Aaron and Eleazar to Mount Hor, where Moses transferred the priestly garments from Aaron to Eleazar. After Aaron's death on Mount Hor, Eleazar took on the role of high priest, continuing the priestly lineage and serving the spiritual needs of the Israelites during their journey through the wilderness and into the Promised Land. Question 22. How often was the year of Jubilee celebrated? A. Every 50 years. B. Every 49 years. C. Every 45 years. D. Every 44 years. You get 10 seconds. That's A, every 50 years. According to Leviticus chapter 25, verses 
8 to 13 after seven cycles of seven years, totaling 49 years, the 50th year was declared a year of jubilee. This special year involved forgiving debts, freeing slaves, and returning land to its original owners, representing a significant reset of social and economic structures. The year of Jubilee was a time of liberty and restoration, underscoring God's justice and mercy. Question 23. During what feast were all that our Israelites commanded to dwell in booths? A. Harvest B. Feast of Booths C. Day of Atonement D. Feast of Tabernacles You get 10 seconds. That's D. Feast of Tabernacles this is outlined in Leviticus, chapter 23, verses 33 to 43, where God instructed the Israelites to live in temporary shelters or booths for seven days as a reminder of their journey through the wilderness after leaving Egypt. The Feast of Tabernacles is a major Jewish festival, celebrating God's provision and faithfulness during their desert wanderings. Question 24. What feast was celebrated every seventh year? A. Passover B. Sabbath year C. Feast of Pentecost D. Feast of Tabernacles You get 10 seconds. That's B, Sabbath year. As described in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 to 7, the Sabbath year involved allowing the land to rest from cultivation, with no sowing or harvesting permitted. This year of rest was meant to demonstrate trust in God's provision and give the land time to recover. The Sabbath year also had social implications, including the remission of debts and the rest for Hebrew slaves. Question 25. During what feast were all of the Hebrew slaves to be freed? A. Passover B. Feast of Tabernacles C. Feast of Pentecost D. Year of Jubilee You get 10 seconds. That's D, year of Jubilee. This is specified in Leviticus, chapter 25, verses 39 to 41, where God commanded that Hebrew slaves be released in the year of Jubilee. This special year, celebrated every 50 years, was designed to restore liberty and ensure a level of equality among God's people. It served as a time of renewal, with significant social and economic implications, reflecting God's concern for justice and the fair treatment of all individuals. Wow, what an incredible journey through the Old Testament, testing your memory about Israel's history and stories. How did you do? Whether you got all the answers right or learned something new, always remember that the Bible is a treasure trove of knowledge ready for us to delve into and explore. If you enjoyed this quiz, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Let's bring them along for this enlightening experience. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more quizzes and deep insights into the Bible. We value your input, so please share your score, thoughts, or ideas for future quizzes in the comments section. Together, we can continue our journey to better understand God's Word. Thank you for joining us, and may your spiritual path be filled with joy and wisdom. See you in the next quiz.